Hi and Assalamualaikum. It's me, Cikgu Zana. This video is the continuation on graphic functions using transformation that was taught in the IU free online tuition class. To those who have missed the class, don't worry. I have shared the class link given in the description below. The link for the notes and questions on this lesson is also shared in the description. So please feel free to download. So let us recall the functions that we have learned to graph. The functions are cubic functions, the radical functions, the rational functions, and functions of the form modulus f of x. So in this video, we will learn how to apply the transformation rule to graph the exponential functions, the logarithmic functions, and lastly, the modulus functions. But before that, I wish to clarify the correct function for graph B. If all of you remember, when I asked which is the correct graph for the function gx equal 1 plus square root x plus 3, most of you have answered graph A. Well done. Then, this is followed by another question, who can write the correct function for graph B? So the correct answer is gx equal 1 plus square root 3 minus x. Now let us carry out the transformation based on this function to confirm that the answer is correct. So here is the parent function. Negative indicates that we reflect the graph horizontally across the y-axis. Then we shift the graph 3 units to the right. Plus 1 indicates that we shift the graph 1 unit upwards. Thus, this confirms that the function gx equal 1 plus square root 3 minus x is the correct answer. Okay, let's learn how to graph the exponential function. But first, let us get to know the form, the shape, and the characteristic of the function. An exponential function is of the form f of x equals a to the power of x for all x in r and a is greater than 1. And the shape of the graph is And observe that for all x in R, f of x is always positive or f of x is greater than 0. This indicates that the x-axis or y equals 0 is the horizontal asymptote. And as x increases, a to the power of x also increases but at a faster rate. When x is 0, f of x is 1. And the end behavior here is x approaches negative infinity, a to the power of x approaches 0. The function is neither odd nor even. And the domain is for all x in the real numbers. And the range is y such that y is greater than 0. What is the shape of the graph if the value of a lies between 0 and 1? Observe that as x increases, a to the power of x decreases and approaches 0. And f of x is always positive for all x in r. When x is 0, 
f of x is still 1. And the end behavior as x approaches negative infinity, a to the power of x approaches infinity. The domain is still the real numbers r and the range is still y such that y is greater than 0. Here is the transformation rule for the exponential graph. Observe the form of the exponential function. A is the vertical stretch or compression. When the value of A is greater than 1, the graph is stretched. When A is a fraction, the graph is compressed. When A is negative, the graph is flipped upside down. B is the horizontal stretch or compression. When B is greater than 1, the graph is compressed. When B is a fraction, the graph is stretched. When B is negative, the graph is flipped left-right. C is the horizontal shift. When C is negative, the graph is shifted to the right. When C is positive, the graph is shifted to the left. D is the vertical shifting. When D is positive, the graph is shifted upwards. When D is negative, the graph is shifted downwards. Here is another method to transform the exponential graphs. The transformation for A, B, and D are the same. But observe the expression Bx plus C, it is grouped together. Thus, the horizontal shifting is obtained by equating Bx plus C to 0. If x is a negative C over B, we shift the graph to the left. If x is C over B, we shift the graph to the right. Okay, let's try to graph the exponential function. Take note, the exponential function can also be to any base, not necessarily to base E. It can be any value greater than 1. Here is the shape of the parent function, e to the power of x, with y equals 0 as the horizontal asymptote, okay? And the domain is for all x in R and the range is y greater than 0. So we are going to graph the function g of x equal 1 minus e to the power of 2x. So how is g of x related to f of x? So we can rewrite g of x as 1 minus f of 2x. So what does this mean? 2x here indicates that we need to compress the graph horizontally with factor half. Negative in front of f, we reflect the graph vertically. 1 we shift the graph one unit upwards, or a translation of 0, 1 is carried out. So let's see how the transformation is done. Okay, here I have already compressed f of x horizontally with factor half. See how we compress it horizontally? So when we compress it horizontally, the graph is nearer to the y-axis. And observe that the point 0, 1 is the same. Next, we need to reflect the graph vertically, that is, reflect across the x-axis. So this is the shape of the reflection. So this is y equal negative e to the power of 2x. Then followed by shifting this graph one unit upwards. But remember, we have the asymptote y equals zero, 
So we need to shift the asymptote first, one unit upwards, followed by the graph. So shift the asymptote. So we have y equal 1. Then we shift the graph. One unit upwards. So we have the graph of the function g of x equals 1 minus e to the power of 2x. So the domain is for all x in R and the range. Observe the curve. All the y values is below y equal 1. Thus the range is y less than 1. The second function that we are going to graph is g of x equals 2e to the power of negative x minus 3. And the relationship between g of x and f of x is 2f of negative x minus 3. The 2 in front of f indicates that we need to stretch the graph vertically with factor 2. Negative x in brackets indicates that we need to reflect the graph horizontally. Negative 3 at the back here indicates that we need to shift the graph 3 units downwards or we carry out the translation 0, negative 3. So let us see how the transformation is carried out. So we have here the parent function e to the power of x. So now we're going to stretch the graph vertically with factor 2. See how the graph is stretched? The point 0, 1 is stretched to 0, 2. So we have the curve y equal 2e to the power of x. Next, we need to reflect the graph horizontally across the y-axis. So we have y equal 2e to the power of negative x. Okay, the last transformation is to shift the curve 3 units downwards. But first, we have to shift the asymptote y equals 0. So here, this is the asymptote y equals negative 3. Then we shift the graph. 3 unit downwards. Observe the y intercept here, 0, 2. When you shift it, it becomes 0, negative 1. And you are encouraged to find the x intercept 2, negative ln 3 over 2. Thus, we have the graph of the function gx equal 2e to the power of negative x minus 3. The domain is for all x in R. The range is y greater than negative 3. So the next function is gx equal e to the power of half x minus 1 plus 4. So how is gx related to f of x? We can rewrite gx as f of half x minus 1 plus 4. So what does this mean? Okay, Half x indicates that we need to stretch the graph horizontally with factor 2. Next, we equate half x minus 1 to 0. We have x equal 2. So this indicates that we need to shift the graph 2 units to the right. Plus 4 means that we need to shift the graph 4 units upwards or we translate the graph to 4. So let's see how the transformation is done. So I have done the stretching horizontally with factor 2. When you stretch horizontally, the graph will be closer to the x-axis. And notice that the point 0, 1 remain the same. Next, we need to shift the graph 2 units to the right. So let's shift the graph 2 units to the right. Observe, 
the graph cuts the y-axis at 0, e to the power of negative 1, and when x is 2, our y is 1. Next, we need to shift the graph for unit upwards. So remember, when we shift upwards, we have to shift the asymptote first. So let's shift the asymptote for unit upwards, followed by shifting the curve for unit upwards. So now we have the graph gx equal e to the power of half x minus 1 plus 4. Now please take note, write down the y-intercept. So what is the domain? The domain is still the real numbers are. What is the range? Observe here, the curve is greater than 4. So the range is y greater than Next, we have the logarithmic functions. The general form is f of x equal log x base a, where x must be positive for all x in R and a must be greater than 1. But when the base is base e, it is known as the natural logarithmic function. And the form is f of x equal log x, where x must be positive for all x in R. And the graph of the function is the graph exists in the domain for all x greater than 0 or in the interval from 0 to infinity. The range is for all y in R or in the interval from negative infinity to infinity. The graph intercept the point 1, 0, increasing in the interval from 0 to infinity. The y-axis is the vertical asymptote. Observe that log x base a approaches negative infinity as x approaches 0 from the right. And the graph log x base a is actually the reflection of the graph of the exponential function a to the power of x in the line y equal x. So we can deduce that log x base a is the inverse function of a to the power of x or vice versa. The rule of the transformation of logarithmic function graphs are as follow. Observe the general form of the logarithmic function. So as usual, A is the vertical stretch of compress. So when A is greater than 1, the graph is stretched. When A is a fraction, the graph is compressed. When A is negative, we flip the graph upside down. And B is the horizontal stretch of compression. When B is greater than 1, we compress. When B is a fraction, we stretch. When B is negative, we flip the graph left-right. C is the horizontal shift. When C is negative, the graph is shifted to the right. When C is positive, the graph is shifted to the left. D is the vertical shifting. When D is positive, we shift the graph upwards. When D is negative, we shift the graph downwards. Here is the second method where we find the value of x such that bx plus c is 0. So if x equals negative c over b, the graph is shifted c over b units to the left. If x equals c over b, the graph is shifted c over b units to the right. Now let's look at the first example. Graphing the function p of x equals 2 log x plus 1. So how is p of x related to f of x? We can rewrite p of x as 2 f of x plus 1. So what does this mean? 
the 2 in front of f of x indicates that the graph is stretched vertically with factor 2. Next, the plus 1 here indicates that we need to shift the graph one unit upwards or we carried out the translation 0, 1. So let us see how the transformation is done. So we have the parent function ln x. Next, we're going to stretch it vertically with factor 2. Observe how the curve is stretched. Here, the curve is stretched upwards, while here, the curve is stretched downwards. And notice that the point 1, 0 remain the same. Thus, we have the curve y equals to ln x. Next, we need to shift the curve 1 unit upwards. So, we have the graph of the function p of x equal to ln x plus 1. So the domain is for all x greater than 0 and the range is for all y in R. Let's graph the function g of x equals 2 minus ln in brackets x minus 1. So how is g of x related to f of x? We can rewrite g of x as negative f of x minus 1 plus 2. So what does this mean? The negative in front of f indicates that we need to reflect the graph vertically. Next, x minus 1 is in the bracket so grouped together, so we equate x minus 1 to 0, so we have x equal 1. So this means that we have to shift the graph one unit to the right. Plus 2 indicates that we need to shift the graph two units upwards, or translated 1, 2. So let's see how the transformation is done. This is the parent function. First, we need to reflect it vertically. In other words, reflection across the x-axis. Observe how it is reflected. So we have here the graph y equal negative ln x. Next, we need to shift one unit to the right. Remember, we have the vertical asymptote. So we need to shift the asymptote first one unit to the right, followed by the graph. So we shift the asymptote, one unit to the right, followed by the graph, one unit to the right. So now we have y equal negative ln x minus 1. So next, we need to shift it two unit upwards. So when we shift it two unit upwards, Observe here, when x is 2, our y is also 2. And the curve intercept the x-axis at e squared plus 1. So thus, we have the graph of the function g of x equals 2 minus ln in brackets x minus 1. So the domain is for x such that x must be greater than 1. Okay. And the range is for all y in R. The next function is P of x equals 2 plus ln in brackets 1 minus 3x. We can rewrite P of x as f of 1 minus 3x plus 2. So how is p of x related to f of x? The 3 in front of x indicates that we need to compress the graph horizontally with factor 1 over 3. The negative in front of 3 of x means we need to reflect the graph horizontally. Then 1 minus 3x is equal to 0, so we have x equal 1 over 3 
So, it indicates that we need to shift the graph 1 over 3 units to the right. And plus 2 at the back here indicates that we need to shift 2 units upwards. Or, translation of 1 over 3 to is carried out. So, again, let's observe how the transformation is carried out. So, this is the parent function. So first, we need to compress the graph horizontally with factor 1 over 3. So how, observe how the graph is compressed. So when the graph is compressed horizontally, the graph is nearer to the y-axis. So here we have y equal ln 3x and intercept at x 1 over 3. Next, we need to reflect the graph horizontally, that is, across the y-axis. So we have here y equal log in brackets negative 3x. Next, we need to shift 1 over 3 units to the right. So first, we must shift the asymptote 1 over 3 units to the right, followed by the curve. Shifting the asymptote 1 over 3 to the right, followed by the curve y equals log 1 minus 3x. Next, we need to shift vertically or upwards 2 units. So we have here the graph of the function p of x equal 2 plus log in brackets 1 minus 3x. So the domain is x less than 1 over 3 and the range is y in r. So our last function is the modulus function. The general form is f of x equal modulus x. Observe the shape of the modulus function is a v shape. The domain is for all x in r and the range is for all y greater or equal 0. So it has a minimum point 0, 0, intercept at 0, 0, decreasing for all x less than 0, and increasing for all x greater than 0. So the end behavior of the curve, as x tends to negative infinity, f of x tends to infinity. As x tends to infinity, f of x tends to infinity. So, it is an even function. What does we mean by even function? When you reflect the graph horizontally, the shape remains the same. The transformation rule for modulus graph are the same as the rest of the other function. A is the vertical stretch or compress. B is the horizontal stretch or compress. C is the horizontal shifting. And D is the vertical shifting. Here is the second method where we find the value of x such that Vx plus C is 0. So if x equals negative C over B, the graph is shifted C over B units to the left. If x equals C over B, the graph is shifted C over B units to the right. So let's graph the function g of x equals modulus 2x plus 1 minus 4. We can rewrite this as f of 2x plus 1 minus 4. So how is gx related to f of x? The 2 in front of x indicates that the graph is compressed horizontally with factor half. Then we equate 2x plus 1 equals 0. So we have x equal negative half. So what does this mean? The graph is shifted half unit to the left. Minus 4 indicates that we need to shift 4 units 
downwards. Or a translation of negative 1, negative 4 is carried out. So let's see how the transformation is done. So this is the parent function. So first we need to compress it horizontally. So when we compress it horizontally, the graph is nearer to the y-axis. So we have here the graph y equal modulus to x. Next, we need to shift the graph half unit to the left. So we have here y equals modulus to x plus 1. Next, we need to shift it 4 units downwards. So observe the y-intercept here, 0, 1. So when you shift it 4 units downwards, the y-intercept is 0, negative 3. And make sure you label the x-intercept. So we have here negative 5 over 2 and 3 over 2. So this is the graph of the function g of x equals modulus 2x plus 1 minus 4. So the domain is x in r and the range is y greater equals negative 4. The next function that we are going to graph is h of x equals 2 minus 3 modulus 2 minus x. And we can rewrite this as negative 3 f of 2 minus x plus 2. So how is h of x related to f of x? The 3 in front of f indicates that f of x is stretched vertically with factor 3. Negative means we need to reflect the graph vertically. 2 minus x, we equate it to 0. We have x equal 2. It means that we need to shift the graph 2 units to the right. Plus 2 means the graph is shifted 2 units upwards. Or a translation of 2 2 is carried out. So observe how the transformation is carried out. So here we have the parent function. First, we need to stretch it vertically with factor 3. So when we stretch it, the graph is nearer to the y-axis. Next, we need to reflect it vertically, meaning that we need to reflect it across the x-axis. So this is the reflection across the x-axis. Then we need to shift the graph two units to the right. So observe the vertex here, 0, 0. So when you shift it two units to the right, the vertex is 2, 0. Next, we shift the graph two units upwards. Observe here. The y-intercept negative 6 when we shift it 2 units upwards. The y-intercept becomes negative 4. The vertex becomes 2, 2. So we have the graph of the function h of x equal to minus 3 modulus 2 minus x. By the way, you are encouraged to write or label the x-intercept. So we have here 4 over 3, 8 over 3. The domain is for all x in R and the range is y less than equals 2. We have reached the end of the lesson. Thank you for watching. I hope it was beneficial. And if you are new here, please subscribe Cik Guzana channel, hit the like button and share. By the way, don't forget to get hold of the PDF notes and exercise. 
The link is given in the description below. Lastly, do more practice as practice makes perfect. Hope to see you soon in the next video. Bye!